Woohoo! And we are rolling. Welcome back, Amanda Buys, my little quantum tuning fork. <laughs> Good one. Thank you, Coleman. <laughs> you're welcome. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. If you're watching it with us live, um, and I hope you had a wonderful one if you're watching it later. And so uh, here we are with uh, the Quantum Creator 2. And um, I still had a lot of um, a lot of questions kind of left over from the last series that we did. Uh, yeah. So I was going to actually ask one of the ones that I thought was really amazing, if you don't mind if we start there. Sure. And I'll just have this one question. I just had it pulled up and of course it's disappeared. Okay, here it is. All right, so this is really interesting to me, and this is um, from a gentleman by the name of Duke, who is pretty regular subscriber and commenter, very smart, he should probably have his own channel. Um, but he said, interesting show with Amanda Buys. I have looked into quantum mechanics myself and came to the conclusion that there is no such thing as quantum, as they, the meaning of the word is to quantify. To me, ether is a better name. I don't know if Amanda is aware of the conflict between the ancient Greek philosophers about atom, atomism and etherism. Atomism is be, uh, being the ancient form of the quantum mechan mechanics. However, how Amanda is describing quantum mechanic world sounds a lot more like etherism. Nikola Tesla was an etherist. Mm. Einstein was an atomist. Mm. I think Tesla was correct. Tesla versus Einstein represents, in my opinion. I love when we get feedback like this because yeah, awesome. it's it is it is really awesome. And yeah. I do know that it's splitting hairs as far as, you know, how specific yeah. are we gonna be with what we're calling it? What we want is the truth to get there, however it lands in people's heads. But yeah. I thought that was really cool and I would love to hear what your thoughts are on that. Sure. Uh, I totally agree. I yeah. think I think what we are dealing with is we are trying to take along a lot of the people with us. And so terminology is a, is a big one in, in a sense that um, we could be talking ether and then we could lose them, you know. So, yeah. so um, you know, we're eventually going to get there. But I think the whole thing is to try and uh, get people to think differently, to start realizing what the truth is, um, you know, and sure, you know, when we studied how many years ago, BSc at, at university, it was atoms, and that's basically what they knew, but there's so much more, so much more, um, and so I'm trying to take the old with me slowly, but the conversion needs to take place. So I, I trust that, um, you know, those that are, are way ahead um, scientifically will, will really uh, hear my heart. And um, I, I do agree. I do agree 100% with, yeah. with what he has said. Um, and we've got to get there. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, this is like yeah. our intro, uh, part two. Um, and it's it was quite a shock enough to say that God is the quantum creator and nobody else, you know. It's not a new age or anything like that. It's God and God himself, you know, that who is the creator of 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 quantum. So um that that already stirred quite a bit. Yeah, um, no, and I agree with you. I think if you would have said ether, <laughs> people yeah. would be like <laughs> yeah. Okay, oh, now she's yeah. really out there. And at least, you know, the quantum and AI and D-Wave and all those things are, are current and more people are aware of them. So I appreciate yeah. that. And thank you, Duke, because that was great yeah. commentary yeah. and it was so succinctly written and beautifully, you know, presented. And yeah. I agree with him as well. So uh, fantastic. So the other thing I was thinking about, because even I go back and re-listen because a lot of times I'm, you know, at the dashboard here and I'll miss something. And mm -hmm. I missed something that you said last time that was really kind of, I thought, uh, it's a launching point for this whole concept. And that is, if you were doing deliverance without this information, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to perform the way that you do. 
yeah. or God couldn't perform through you because you wouldn't have the understanding. Yeah. And so can you explain just a little bit about how you came to that understanding? And it might be, you know, running back a little bit. And, and after that, then we'll go ahead and, and start the presentation. But I, I just thought that was such a powerful statement. And it really, to me, this should be a clarion call to all pastors, all, you know, anyone that works in deliverance. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, Carmen, we're working with emotions and we're working with frequencies, um, which we're going to look at tonight, that emotions um, are frequencies and they vibrate. And so if you're dealing with somebody that's come with trauma um, from the moment of conception and you are dealing with layers and layers and layers of death and trauma, that stuff is so deeply buried. And, you know, I, I, we were just chatting today and started to work with a lady about, it's our, our fourth year now, and when we met her the first time, she was chirpy. She was an exhorter. She was, everything was great. She was fun. Um, you know, there was not one sign that there could be a history of bad news, of trauma in her background, nothing. And so for the first year, um, I worked with her and she said, look, I know and I've had a bit of, of ministry and they said, I'm fine now and everything's resolved and, you know, sort of along those lines. And so I said, OK, well, let's pray and we just see, you know, God can confirm. And then um, started to, to go down this road and for a whole year, Carmen, I prayed my heart out. I'm telling you, I really did. Uh, there were there were nights that you know when I would switch off the 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 Skype because we did Skype sessions, and I would just drop my head, you know, on my arms. I would be so exhausted that I just didn't have a breath left. I was so tired from just the warfare wow. and trying to get in, trying to get into the system, and I just couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't crack it. And um, I really. I started, God, get, I think I went through that learning curve to, for God to show me, Amanda, things have changed, things have moved on. You have to move with a cloud, just like my people had to move with a cloud, taking the promised land. And so yes. I had to move with a cloud. Yes. And, and, and as things are opening up more and more in the scientific world and learning about mind control and programming, which is based on science, science, um, but they have studied, they have, they worked on the Holocaust um, people, you know, that they did experiments on them. And so there was a lot of flesh that they worked with, you know, Joseph Mengele, and, and everything that they did was written down, was recorded. And so um, just to realize that if we do not understand frequencies and we don't understand emotions and that it is energy and that everything is put in through energy and, and all the mind control is based on energy, it is very, very, it is so um, intellectual, it is so intelligent that you realize, I mean, these are doctors, these are people that, scientists that have trained, that know everything about the human being. And that is how they have perfected the mind control to where they are today. That you, in the past, we talked 20, 30 years ago, we would struggle to see you know, you could see the shift. You could see when they go into different parts and there's a difference in handwriting. There's a difference in in voice. The, the little children would come forward. They speak as a child. Um, an angry part would come forward and they swear and they, you know, all that. You could see the switches, but they have so perfected mind control. You, you just don't see the shifting anymore. It's let me put it this way, it's more shifting than what it is actual changing. Right. You know? So you have to know this world 
Because if the program was put in with this knowledge, how are you going to get it out? Right, if you don't understanding know. Understanding what you're doing. <laughs> yes. And so, yeah, I, I hope that puts it in a nutshell. But Carmen, you know, as we are, are going along the, these lines, what I'm going to do tonight is focusing on the emotions and the fact that, that they are frequencies sure. and resonance and that the, the, the different cells start to resonate and how they put us into prisons through trauma that we've been through. And if we haven't dealt with those prisons, we stuck and they're yes. going to get, get us and they're going to hurt yes. us. And yes. so it's so important to understand. And this is really laying a, a foundation. Um, we're not later as we go along, we can we can get into deeper work. Sure. So if if you ask me how do I do it? That's going to be a whole lesson or two or three. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was really just wondering how you realized that you couldn't keep up anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. And Thank good you. for you for figuring it out. Um, we'll, we'll talk more about how you figured it out as far as specifics maybe another day, but... Thank you so much. And so you have created part two for us on God, the create the quantum creator, yeah. and the sh the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you. I had time to change the title, which last week I didn't. It was that last scripture that I wanted to to get through. And just as a recap, we can just um, before we start, sure. just talk about that. And so we see that that scripture was saying, um, you know, if God says that that heaven is holding back Jesus until all things are restored, and then heaven will release him, and he'll come for his bride. And so that is such an important scripture. Um, let me just see. Would and you? It like makes me. It makes me think about, I don't know if you've ever watched any of Santo Benici's stuff when he talks about the raising of the chrism, the oil. And it's interesting oh, because yeah. there was the five bridesmaids that had the oil and there were the five bridesmaids that didn't have the oil. And I feel yeah. like you have the oil. <laughs> and oh, when you have you. the oil, but do you see what I'm saying? When you have the yeah. oil, yeah. you you understand this because it is part of what the 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 oil gives you is yes. the information to yes. be able to see it all and yeah. so sometimes um we're we're trying to talk to the ones that don't want the oil in the first place yeah. <laughs> and so these yeah. are all people that come here that want the oil so yeah yeah all right i've just put up this the scripture because i think it's important for us to to actually right. i'm not seeing it yet all right, I'm going to screen share now. I've just popped those scriptures in now. Okay, got so, it. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. So we're going to share. There we go. Is that right, Carmen? You've you've got it. Are you seeing it now? Yes, I am. Good. Good. Okay. All right. So, God, the Quantum Creator, Part Two, and um, the scripture that I ended with last time was Acts three, verse nineteen, twenty, and twenty-one. And so God is speaking to us to say, repent, which means change our mind and purpose. Turn around and return to God, that your sins may be erased, blotted out, and wiped clean. That times of refreshing, of recovering from the effects of heat, of a reviving with fresh air may come from the presence of the Lord. And I think, you know, we all need refreshing. We all need the oil. We really do. Um, and part of it is... We realize we're in we're in the last days. This is a lot of the symptoms are there, the birth pains are there, and we realize that um, you know our time is short, and it's like God is also um, there is a hastening, there is a quickening, there is a uh, you know we must return back to God. We can't play anymore, um, and so we want the refreshing. We've been through three years of real tough stuff. Um, we, we don't say it's finished. We This was the beginning. Um, but obviously, things are still going to are, are going to 
still heat up. Verse 20 says, and that he may send to you the Christ, the Messiah, who before was designated and appointed for you, even Jesus. 21, whom heaven must receive and retain. And that was with Ascension Day. Jesus went up, sat on the right hand of the Father, where heaven is holding him until the time for the complete restoration of all that God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets for um, ages past. And so we just see how um, for Jesus to come back for his bride, the restoration of all things need to happen. And that means that, you know, we, we must come in line with the fact that God is the quantum creator. Um, and not chuck it out and and blame the new age and all of that say, well, it's not our God. That is not true because God is the greatest scientist. And so we have to understand that for Jesus to come back and for me to usher in him coming back, to have a part in bringing Jesus back for the bride is the fact that I'm going to open up and say, Father, teach me, teach me um, so that I can be part of bringing Jesus back for the release of heaven when things have come to a complete restoration. God's going to restore this whether you want to be part of it or not. God is still going to restore. But if we can be together in unity with one heart and, and one mind and just say, but I'm going to, I want to see the complete restoration of all things. And so um, that I will not, not be sitting on the sideline, but I want to be part of this. All right. So what we're going to look at then tonight is emotional energy and the body. And this is so important, common for us to understand how do I help somebody that's deeply traumatized? Now, I know many people have done trauma therapy. Um, they've gone on courses, they teach courses, but they still do it the trauma way and not the frequency and vibration and resonance way. Amen. And so for us to really see an, a, a healing, to really experience the healing, it's important to um, embrace this truth. All right. So what are emotions? What, is, what does God say to us in his word around emotions? And um, as you live through the days and the years of your life, you are continually experiencing emotions of one sort or another. I mean, even little babies, you know, they start, um, they are created for joy because the joy of the Lord is my strength. But as they start to live life, then they start to crawl um, or, or they, they fall or something, even as a little baby. They can, that's pain and that's a shock. And so they experience the negative emotions. And then when they start to crawl, then they also go into fear and anger and sadness and, and upset and all these things, they are feeling the negative emotions. Now, the whole key is what the things are that we studied um, a little while back, Carmen, we, you and I went through that whole course of how do I get back to a place of joy that I'm not stuck in a place of the negative emotion because what what the enemy does and this is why I'm saying to you it is so intellectual it is it is brilliantly done because they have studied mankind yes and they know exactly that they can use our emotions as prison bars and lock us up and if you don't understand that, how are you going to get the person free? And so this is this is really, really important. So we start to experience negative emotions. And these feelings um, that you have all serve a purpose. So there is a reason why I'm feeling disgust. You know, a, a mommy, the face of a mommy becomes the mirror for a child. And so... Uh, we, we spoke about it when we did that course on, um, you know, how, how yes. can I protect myself um, if I, if I um, you know, I don't want to be deceived. 
And so I need to have those doors shut. I need to deal with, with the trauma in my life. And so I need to realize that my feelings and, and the fact that I've experienced these, there's a reason for it. And so if mommy, let's say baby has a dirty nappy, I mean diaper, and I've got to think of the different countries and different languages. And so you say diaper. Is that right? For an American. All right. Yes. So baby has a dirty diaper. And South Africans will understand nappy. And so with this with the dirty diaper, mommy comes and then mommy opens up the nappy and gets the smell and all the rest that goes with the with a with a nappy, with a dirty diaper. And then she pulls a face. Ah, and she pulls his face, and then baby's just done the most awesome thing. Well, so baby felt <laughs> most awesome job, and mommy's saying it's not good, and mommy's showing disgust. And so, what does baby do? Baby mirrors disgust, and so there's a purpose for all these emotions that I'm feeling. There's a purpose. And so they provide motivation, direction, and communication from my body and my spirit. And so I need to understand I have these emotions. God has given me these emotions, and it's an expression. You know, a common that there are people that have been so wounded and they have cut themselves off. And we're going to also talk about numbing, numbing our feelings. And once they've numbed their feelings, um, they, they, they don't know how to feel. And so we've got charts of these little faces. And then because they can't express to say, I feel dot, dot, dot. What do you feel? They can't say because they'd never had parents that were interested in them, that came and sat on the bed at night, covered them with a blanket, and then said, how was your day? And got the child because they're most vulnerable at the time before they go to bed. And so it is so great to be able to sit with your child and listen to them and let them speak. It was bad at school. What happened? What did the teacher do? What happened? And so they share the, a bit of their day. And then you pray with them. And you say, well, let's let's take it to the father now. And you help them process the negative emotions. Now, who's got parents like that? You know, it's wonderful to have had parents like that. And go on your knees and thank God if that's the kind of parent you've had. Amen. But the majority of us didn't have that because our own parents were so broken. And so we didn't have that in our lives. And um, it, it's so important that I need to be able to express. I must say what my, my emotions and my feelings are. And so when it comes to negative emotions, they can also be useful. And, uh, you know, we think, how is that possible? Um, sure, if, if I have felt negative, like I'm tired, I've got a headache, um, I'm not feeling good, my body's trying to say something, there's, there's a message coming through. And so even if they are at times uncomfortable or painful, negative emotions are important. And so it's like it's these these are like um, your emotions are like lights on your dashboard of your car. And if they are flickering, it's saying you got to you got to pay attention. Something's wrong. Something's going on. And so I've got to then find my purpose. I've got to say, if I have anger issues, if I am losing my temper, if I'm losing my cool and I'm, I'm just lashing out and things are going wrong, um, I need to find out why, especially on the road, road rage. How many of us, you know, struggle with road rage? And so if that's flashing on your dashboard, please make work. You've got to find out what's at the root of why are you feeling like you're feeling. And so all of us experience negative emotional um, issues, ex extremes, emotional extremes at times. And it seems to be part of what it means to be human. I mean, we all lose it. At times, we just lose it. We try our best. We count to 10. We do everything that we've been told to do. But still, we lose it. 
And so if, if I've had that at extreme times where it's just been so, you know, I, I'm under stress and, and I've got to get things done and I'm deadlining or whatever it is, um, negative effects of negative emotions, we or it's, to, it's part of being human. Mm-hmm. And so you don't beat up yourself about it. It's what am, what is what is my body? What are these emotions telling me? So what can I learn? How can I work with myself when these things surface? All right, then we see our emotions don't come out of nowhere. So they don't just drop and land on me. And now they don't just come out of nowhere. They are generated by our bodies based on two criteria. And the first one is what we are experiencing in the moment. And so that could be a trigger and it, it just it's it's just happened and I've lashed out. And the second thing is information stored, past history, that could have a trigger on it. And now the frequency is triggered and suddenly this comes forward and it's something that, hey, it's from my past. It's not in the moment. It's something out of my past that has triggered me and now it's it's I've exploded. It's hit a bomb inside of me. And so those are the two ways that I can, um, my emotions that, that are there. So it's in the moment or history, something that's stored in my brain um, from past experiences. Couldn't it also be fear of the future projecting out into the, the future? Yes, but it could yeah. be in that fear common could be something of my history right that's the only way it would be there yeah yeah like like for example I was abandoned as a child and now um I'm suddenly feeling abandoned again you know a situation in my life or I'm afraid my boyfriend's gonna leave me or whatever exactly exactly okay so we see so whether we are feeling happiness or shame in other words positive or negative that emotion comes from deep within and for a reason. So I must be aware, I must be mindful of my emotions. I need to make sure that that I I don't just lash out and leave it. I'm accountable and I need to be responsible before God. And so if I hurt my children because they've triggered me and now I've lashed out at them and I'm all upset, I, I need to go back and say, I'm sorry. I can't just, because of my pride and my ego, ignore it and because then it builds up. And what I'm doing is I'm now loading, I'm loading these negative emotions on my children. And I will, there will be consequences because what I sow, I will reap. And so I really need to, you know, especially when in our love relationships, in our with our loved ones, it is so important that we make right. If and and it's being human, it's being human that we lash out, we get angry, we get frustrated, whatever you want to call it. But I'm, I need to take responsibility. So whether it's it's good emotions or bad emotions, it's coming from deep within. Yes. There is fruit. There is a root, yes. and yes. I need to 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 look at it. I need to be responsible. And I think this is a really important piece for people to catch, because what I have found when I'm working with people is the ones who don't look at it often don't know to look at it. And so that awareness and that question is is already a higher frequency. It's already mm-hmm. you getting better. Yeah, absolutely. Good, good point, Carmen. That's so good, because. By ignoring it, you are stuck and you're in a prison. But the problem is you're not only hurting yourself, but you're hurting the others around you as well. And that you need to be responsible for. And so I know what it's like to live a life where um, and and basically to be the recipient of somebody who's got, had such an ego and so much pride that they couldn't say they're sorry. Same. Um, and you, you, you understand the pain there, you know, and, and somehow you start building things inside your own heart. And so um, you carry it with you. 
you carry it with you. You know, it it it's, it it sounds. How's that possible? You're a child and you get wounded and you grow up. Come on, get over it. But those are things that are stuck and it's deep within. Mm -hmm. And so we need to ask God to help us to, to find what's going on, find the root. And so this, this is an interesting picture um, on what emotions are. And that if you look at the positive emotions, your frequency is higher. Mm -hmm. And that means that you um, you are more light. And so love, look at the beauty of love. It's beautiful around the heart. Um, and then depression is all blue. I mean, it looks like one of those trolls. Yeah, you know, the those torso's black. Death. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. Contempt doesn't look good. It looks like a lot of anger. And isn't that interesting? Around the root energy wheel, you've got that blue at yeah. the bottom there. Interesting that it's positioned there you know yes. so it's something that could have happened um in your childhood you know some something could have gone wrong pride look at pride you know it's me 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 it's all about me um and you shining your own light there and then shame shame is shame the, looks like spider-man <laughs> it does it does <laughs> yeah. literally so, looks so the thing, just like him yeah so the thing is we um we were not you know the very first negative emotion was shame in the Garden of Eden. And um, that's why they grabbed fig, fig leaves because they were ashamed. They were naked and they were ashamed. Right. And so shame is the very first, you know, it, it's got a very, very low frequency. So, you know, if you were shamed, let's say disciplined by shame, um, it, is, it is a horrible way to discipline a child. And it's not a God way at all. Right. If you shame a child and tell them how stupid they are, how could they, didn't, couldn't they look, couldn't they see, you know, all the accusations of how you shame people. And we were raised being shamed because it was kind of like believed, oh, it's, it's going to sort them out. You know, it's going to sort them out quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, little did, did my parents know that that's not the way to go. Right. So, you know, what's so amazing, Carmen, is that my eldest daughter is a play therapist. And um, so she works with children that have gone through some serious trauma and pain and the negative stuff. Um, and That's so, so cool that it's it's amazing how God has has brought the blessing back in the place. Yeah. of hers. And so she's yeah. very, very strict on how you discipline a child. It's so um, good. You know, you need to listen to them. You need to hear their hearts. And, you know, it was amazing. Uh, we we have um, seven little grandchildren and two of them are boys. And the one little guy had quite a temper on him. Um, and so he would he would lose it and then run off in this huff and puff. And, you know, really, uh, he would be so angry. And he was about four. Um, and then Renee would go to him and she would put her arms around him and look at him and she'd say to him, you were very angry about that, weren't you? Were you very angry with what happened? And she'd talk him out of it. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it was absolutely amazing. So, so he cool. stopped and he's actually outgrown it now. You know, it's it's over. So it's just the way you... you absolutely. A hundred percent. I also think it'd be so cool if we had glasses where we could see yeah. <laughs> like, you know, okay, here comes somebody that's literally in shame. Let's, let's, yeah. you know, give them a little compassion. Yeah. But you know, Carmen, I do believe that we have the Holy Spirit and that's why we need to train yes. our spiritual senses. Yes. Like and you can, you can, you can. You, and you it just it would be so nice if that you could just put the glasses on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've got some wrong glasses, actually, from my physical dad. I've got the wrong glasses. And so when I would try and look at the Heavenly Father through my dad's glasses, that was a problem. Oh, yeah. So that's that's common for a lot of people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That was that was a big one. So, um, yeah. But, but the Holy Spirit is so faithful that he will show us people that that are wounded and when we we take time to really listen to his voice and we we sharpen our spiritual senses in in prayer 
um, he is faithful and he will he will show us all right so emotions are vibrations of pure energy and so i love this picture i think it's so cute um you've got four sad faces and then you've got the happy guy because he's now <laughs> on the run he's on the roll and so they are vibrations of pure energy and that's what emotions are so um amazing how god has put it all together inside so I, I'm vibrating the whole time. And as we spoke last week, creating an electromagnetic field around myself the whole time. And so um, I need to understand that if if I have these emotion, negative emotions inside of me, they are going to be vibrating at a certain frequency. But they they don't, they're not standing still, they're not static. They are affecting the organs wherever they are stuck they are affecting the organs around them. And so, I mean, that's what that's what uh, resonance is. And so we have to understand that it's going to affect my whole being. And I need to then be able to deal with it, let it go. So, um, yeah, we're going to be singing that song a little bit uh, tonight about let it go, let it go. <laughs> so I love that. Hold on to these emotions. And so every emotion has its own unique vibrational frequency. So fear is different to joy. Joy has got a high frequency, but fear has got a low frequency. And so everything in the universe is made up of energy and emotions are no exception. So everything is energy. Anointing is energy. God is energy. He's energy within me. I am in him and he is in me. And so everything is energy. It's not a new age thing. It's God, it's a God thing. It's God, the quantum creator. So quantum physics has proven that energies affect other energies. So if I'm loaded with negative emotions, I'm angry, I'm bitter, um, you know, I, I fear, I have all sorts of negative emotions, I'm charged. I'm charged with a frequency, and that is causing me to vibrate at a certain frequency. So when the minute I come in contact, and remember, we interrelated, we affect each other. And so if I come into a room, I am going to affect, and somebody talks to me, they're going to pick up Absolutely. and think, oh, I've got to get away. I've got to get away because this is just too much. Um, you know, and also they're very needy. And so they want to draw everything out of you because you come and you are loaded with God's energy and you loaded with, with joy and, and, and exhortation and you build, you want to build and right. they are so needy, they empty. And yes. so, you know, I call it love buckets. And so they want to draw everything from you. And it's when you're finished with these people, it's like, I've got, I've got no more energy. I, I'm, I'm totally depleted. I'm exhausted, you know, just being around such a person. And right. so it's, and it's then there's not, people that bypass and then there's people that stick their head in the sand, but they're still vibrating yeah. at that shame and frustration. They might not yes. outwardly be as needy, but the vibration is still there. And that's why I believe a lot of people get bullied or pushed around because they're still in that space and acting like they aren't. And it's yeah. it's bothersome to some people. Yeah. I mean, not to me, but yeah. absolutely. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree with you. Yeah, that's where our bullies come from, you know, because they are vibrating and then they 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 impose it on those around them. You know, they they don't they don't want you to be happy. You can't be happy. You gotta now suffer like they are suffering. And so they, they get angry and jealous if you're happy. So it's quite sad. It's quite a sad place to be. We are affected by the energy of our emotions simply because our bodies are also made up of energy. And so our bodies are aligned with the electromagnetic field, um, also the magnetic field, the magnetic north. And um, we are we are aligned with God and, and I'm facing God, the creator, um, the quantum creator. And so because my body is also now energy, now I'm adding emotions to this body 
And so I've, I've now, I'm going to now have, there will be an effect on my body. It can make me sick. It can cause, like I spoke last week when we spoke about this lady that had breast cancer and when they x-rayed her, they could see the poison running from her teeth and it was running down um, into, into her breast tissue, which then gave the cancer. And so definitely we will have emotions that, that will affect our physical body and we will pay a price. All right, so then we see this simple fact is the reason our emotions can affect us so profoundly on a mental, emotional, and physical level. And so I could have stress, I could have all sorts of fear, um, you know, panic attacks. Um, that's uh, mental, you know, dreams. I'm, I have recurring dreams. So why? Because my body is trying to give me a message. There's something wrong and there's something in the subconscious mind. And when you sleep, it's trying to push forward. It's trying to push forward. So just, just um, as a, as a uh, run up to, to your question that you asked, how did you start working on this area is to realize that our God, he is creator of quantum, but he's also creator of your subconscious mind. And so everything that has ever happened to you has been recorded and it's written, it's in the subconscious mind. Now for us to access that, that's, that is where we need to, okay, how do we access? Because people come and sit in front of you and say, I can't remember what happened to me. Right. I don't know because it a lot of a lot. Are verbal. Yeah. Maybe it was in the womb and God can give them a picture you know, God can can give a word or something, something like that can just come forward. And, you know, Carmen, what's what's been coming forward a lot since our, our last session was the one on um, twins. Do you know how many people have contacted me because um, of a twin that had died in the womb and the living twin had absorbed the spirit right. yeah. of, that, of that dead twin? and wow. and. You know, let's say the living twin is a female and the dead twin was a male and then absorb, you know, the living little girl absorbed her brother, her, the spirit of her brother and her whole life. She's been competing with men. Wow. Even to this day, she's an adult, you know, in her 40s. And yet she's had the struggle that she's been in competition with men and she couldn't understand why. You know, it wasn't that her dad wanted a boy. She thought all sorts of things, you know, prayed in all sorts of directions and just never got the answer until she heard this message. And her mom and dad are both beautiful believers. And so they immediately realized there's something here and went for ministry and discovered that the spirit of that little brother had been holding on. Wow. And this was the root of a whole life, more than 40 years of struggle. Isn't that sad? How we get wrong, you know? Yes. And, and, and this is why I get frustrated with schools. To me, this is such important information, understanding how the world works, how, how your body operates, how you interact with others, how everything stays, and how everything is connected to one. And that law of one is such a hard one to, you really have to be mature in your spirit yeah. to take on that we are one you have to really be strong and mature and it's often the last thing i teach people because it's the hardest to do to take mm. on others as yourself that's what love yeah. is yeah yeah so true so true yeah to to really get to the root of something you've prayed for for so long is such a victory, you know, and to really be able to, you, she actually felt this thing. She was, she was like sick for a day. I mean, you can just think she'd been carrying this for so long and then found the reason and then grieved and mourned. I would think it would be like grieving. That's what I was yeah. exactly thinking. Cause yeah. it's, you're, you're just so used to it. There's a loss. Yeah. You don't know what That's it right. is, but there's an emptiness, yeah. even though it's a good yeah. emptiness. Yeah. Yeah, but it's still, it was part of your being, you know, that right. you carried with you. 
So yeah, she lays ill for about a day and then it, you know, she started to process and, and she was able, although it's still a process, you know what I'm saying? It's letting go of his spirit and, and giving him to God and saying, let him go and enjoy heaven. I'll see him one day when, when I get there. Um, you know, it was still, it's, there's still things that she, she will process as she goes on. You know, you can't just in one go think it's all done. All right, so three things happen when experiencing an emotion. Number one, our body generates the emotional vibration. So we start now vibrating. The minute I'm now experiencing an emotion, I'm going to start vibrating because my body's already vibrating, but now the emotion is added. So there's more, there's more vibration happening. The second is we begin to feel the emotion and any thoughts or physical sensations that come along with it. So if it's the sadness or the fear, the panic attacks, whatever it is, but it's not just the vibration, I start to feel something's going on. I actually feel the emotion. Many times I feel things, but I can't verbalize it because I don't have words for it. I was never taught to uh, put words to my emotions, my feelings. Because if you sit with a little child and you teach them how to verbalize their emotions and you start with little emojis and you say, sh sh point the finger, how do you feel? feeling sad you know and then okay you're feeling sad so you are verbalizing the emotion for them and that helps them when they become an adult one day that they're able to communicate you know what you said really hurt me you know and and I can then communicate to you um my emotions what I felt when you said that or did that I felt rejected I felt wounded because of what you said but that takes training. Again, I'm training so that I realize to communicate, you know, I need to learn how to verbalize. All right. So then we see the third point is we choose. Now we get to the choice. We choose to let the emotion go and we move on. After a few seconds to several minutes, and this is called processing. So this is really walking with with God you know having God on our side walking with the Holy Spirit um realizing I am but there's a vibration going on I'm actually feeling this emotion this is causing thoughts I'm hurting I'm angry I'm upset and I have physical sensations my heart can start beating there's so many things that's going on with me now and then the third thing is I now have a choice. And if I can always remember, I have a choice. If I say, but you made me do it. You know, that's where the boundary teaching was so powerful because we, instead of blame shifting, which we, that's what we do. And I mean, Adam and Eve did it right in the garden. That was the very first thing they did was blame shift. It's, it's the wife you gave me. You know, no, it's a snake. And so we keep on blame shifting instead of, hey, but I have a choice. And if I choose God's way, I let this thing go. I'm not going to let this thing stand between us and cause a week or a month of fighting. You know, is it worth it? Is it worth it, um, you know, to keep this thing, to not let it go? I I need to learn what. What is important? Um, of course, not suppress. Um, if, if you've been hurt, talk it out and then let it go. So it's important that I, I'm heard. If I express myself, I am heard. Many times as a child, you try to express yourself and you weren't heard. You were told, shut up. Um, children are, are, are seen and not heard. You know, all the things that we that we hear. Children get downplayed many times yes. that we don't even feel we worthy and and god really wants us to know that that we are important we yeah. are important to him and what we have to say and feel is important and so we need to make each other feel that way too 
Because if that's yeah, and you're, you're actually is, teaching a child how to be sovereign in their own abilities to parent themselves yes. or to allow God to guide them in parenting themselves, yes. which uh, to me, I don't think anyone should get married until they have that skill. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. And also, what can what what can I control? And so um, I love the hula hoop story around boundaries. And so when we do marriage camps, I like to be practical. So I would take a pink hula hoop and a blue hula hoop, and then I pick a couple, and then you know tell the lady to put on the pink one and the guys to put on the blue one, and then and then also blue sunglasses, and she's got pink sunglasses, and then. Um, you know how we how we then relate with each other and what can i change what what is within my power to change because i can't change you that's not my responsibility i can pray for you but i can't change you and many times we get married and we think i'm going to change this person oh to be yes they I do want, you know and then we make one huge mistake because that's not part of my mandate i'm not allowed to do that i'm then moving into witchcraft I'm starting to practice. Yes, you know, yes. Manipulation to... is witchcraft. Yeah. Get That's this right. across. Yeah. So if I'm if I want to change my partner, I I can only change what is in my circle. So hold the hula hoop, look at that circle, and find out what is inside my circle that I can change. Yeah. So the the person who I am in a relationship with has got another color hula hoop. And, and and he or she has got inside that hula hoop, has got their own issues that they are responsible for. And so I can't I can't go and in, jump into that hula hoop. It's not gonna work. It's not my <laughs> mandate. Exactly. But that's what we do. We get into each other's hula hoops and we try and and control them and manipulate yeah. them and so throw good. tantrums you know, to, to try and get them to change. And, you know, one, one guy actually tried to, well, he did eventually commit suicide, but it started off the first time around was, I'll show you, if you don't do as I say, Man. this is what I'm going to do, you know, yep. and, and then managed to actually get help in time and get this, his stomach pumped and he lived. But the second time around, we needed it again, he hoped it's just to scare. It's a scare tactic, but he actually overplayed his hand. So and, sad. Um, yeah, it's very sad because I'm trying to change you. I'm trying to make you like me. Yes. And that you well, and I think of it as I'm trying to play God is what they're yeah, doing. Absolutely. You're and, right. And yeah. it's so funny. We're so similar because when I teach, I sometimes teach groups of children um about uh, holding a good vibration mm -hmm. and i use i use balloons and i oh. teach them that it's their responsibility this is their their balloon and wherever yeah. it lands is up to them but that it's actual work to go oh my balloon fell i got to yeah. pick it up i've got to be the one that keeps you know popping it up in the air yeah. and and it really helps. And there were yeah. so many moms that were like, that helped me so much. So I like the hula hoops. Thanks for adding that to my my <laughs> my thing that I'll do. Yeah. And then of course the glasses, you know, I look at I look at my partner through my glasses. And if I've got pink colored um glasses, I'm gonna have a feminine look, but it's not, it's not he's got blue glasses so he looks differently we our per, uh, perceptions are different absolutely and, so, and allow them to be different allow them instead of trying to and the whole thing behind trying to control others is fear so i become jezebelic because of fear really or greed. Yep. All, you know okay so um these are the three things so when i experience an emotion I, I, I get a, a emotional vibration. The second thing is I feel that emotion and I have thoughts around that emotion and I have physical sensations, heartbeat, um, flashing, whatever. I can have a physical sensation. And then the third thing is now I can choose. What am I going to do with this? Because if I'm God's child, I have a choice. 
And if I choose to hold on to it, I, I'm going to have trouble. I'm going to have trouble in my relationships and um, because I don't want to let it go. This is more important, my opinion and my way, you know, or the highway. So it's, it's, it's what we choose. Now, once processing is completed, and I've chosen this child specifically sitting with a parent, um, you've got to help them. You've got to teach them from small. How do I process my emotions? And once you've helped them and they've cried and, and they've been heard, then you pray with them, you speak to them, you comfort them, and um, then they're able, once they've let it go, okay, let's forgive. Let's forgive whoever hurt you, who bullied you. Let's let it go. And then you've helped them to successfully move on from the emotional experience, and it shouldn't cause any more problems. And that's really what a child should be helped to do. But if the parent isn't even doing it, how can you give something to a child which you don't have? Exactly. So it is so important. Start with yourself. Always go in your hula hoop and start working with what's in your hula hoop. And then um, you can start appreciating what's in the other person's hula hoop. So it's important that we help each other process our emotions. But now let's look at unprocessed emotions. And this is where we're getting to. The emotional experience is incomplete. Now look at that person in captivity in the mind. You're in a prison. Emotion, negative emotions, emotions that are not processed is going to create prison bars. And you're going to be trapped. And this yep. is what we call a trapped emotion. And this is going to make you sick. It can end up with cancer. It can be so many things in your life because you have not processed your emotions. They've built up layers upon layers upon layers. Sometimes we get four layers of fear, four layers of shock, you know, mm -hmm. and you can just know that this is really, this person is really struggling with um unprocessed emotions and, and it's so th theirs it's it's literally yeah. theirs even yes. though other people might have put it in and yes. <laughs> after my divorce i wrote the longest like i don't know how many page letter it was like 11 about all of the things that you know my ex you know blamed him for this that the other i made like a whole list and i went back after i'd had like I guess I would call it the anointing. Like when I finally like had that oil where I really was fearless, when I really got it, when I felt like I could share it with others and they would ask, I went back and looked at it. <laughs> I just was crossing them off one at a time going, okay, none of these prisons are still here. This is gone. And it was That's such amazing. a, it was such a freeing feeling to, um, to own all of that. Yeah. It's a bitter pill to swallow, but yeah. it's also very empowering. Yeah. But the thing is, common. if you stay the victim, if you stay the victim, then you're not going to get free. You'll never get free. And so what is so important for a survivor is that they don't stay a victim. In other words, this is what they do to me. This is what they do to me. Sure, we understand it's very traumatic and it's horrible. And it's evil and it should never have happened. And we understand that. But the thing is, you can't work with the child part because they don't have the responsibility. You have to move into the adult parts. And they are they are the ones that have the age of the body, has got the most authority. And then the Christian presenter, because you now belong to Jesus and you have authority in his name, but now you you if you keep on being stuck as as the victim, then you talking from the child's perspective. Amen. And we're not we're not we're not getting to the adult who can take responsibility, yep. because it's you know it, it's my responsibility is my heart attitude, my rebellion, my anger. I I didn't choose for it to happen to me, but still I chose to then react in rebellion, to react in bitterness. And I have to take responsibility for that. And so it's like you said, you know, in the beginning it was, it was 
you were battling, you know, with the pain. Oh, I was a victim through. for sure. But yeah. once you shed yeah. that off, you also see it. And, and then you, you understand why somebody is going through a divorce or having a hard time at work or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And it's because their vibration is, is victim <laughs> and it just keeps oh. attracting more and more bad stuff. And, and so, you it. know, it becomes urgent to be able yeah. to do this. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You are so right. But, you know, what is powerful is to recognize it. That's the first step to healing is recognize it but then don't stop there and then okay what am i going to do about it i need help i need help and so now my emotional experience is incomplete i wasn't helped as a child to let it go i was i've been stuck in negative emotional places for many many years it's made me bitter it's made me angry now, there's the energy of the emotion is likely to become trapped in my body. And so that energy is now, you know, the anger, the bitterness, whatever it is, the rebellion, um, all those things, the victim is, is, is vibrating inside of me. And it's, it's to get to lift it off, to get it out of the body, to get that frequency, to get my body to let it go. I have to really start working at it. It's not going to automatically just go. I need to start working to let the negative energy go. And yes. so uh, this is where we, what we call then if it's if, if the emotion is not processed. Yes, it's trapped. And what's so cool is God meets you where you go. So yeah. it's like if you just give just a little bit of effort to holding that balloon up off the ground, um, God lifts it. Yes. and and helps you yes yes absolutely all right so we do not yet completely understand all the reasons emotions are not processed completely i mean you know there's there's so many dynamics um that if i if i start to understand and i start with this journey god opens more and more and more revelation and understanding so i mean it's not going to be in one go it's 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 a step by step process it appears that the more overwhelming or extreme an emotion is, the more likely it will become trapped. And so when it comes to betrayal, when it comes to abandonment, when it comes to a spirit wound, um, I think in the previous sessions we've spoken about a soul wound and a spirit wound. Yes, you did. And so when it comes to a soul wound, um, it's not as deep. I mean, it's painful, but it's easier to let it go than a spirit wound because a spirit wound is much deeper. And a spirit wound is where God's put his plumb line inside of us because we are made in his image. God is spirit. And so I also am spirit. And so if I then um, realize, you know, that my my emotions have not been been processed and and it's a spirit wound then I must be kind to myself to realize that it, it could take time. It could take a little bit longer, but it's okay. So the more extreme, and this is, I'm talking about survivors now. I mean, what they have gone through, there are no words. There are no words for what they have gone through. Yes. And so we recognize that we acknowledge that if we start listening if they have a memory that they want to share let them share it because they need to be heard all these years they were never heard they need to be heard and so but not to be stuck there but now to start processing and only god can help you through this the depth of this extreme trauma and so the, the the survivors they are sitting with so many trapped emotions layers and layers and layers of trapped emotions and so for them to get to a place to actually forgive you know many of them ha had to sacrifice their own offspring this is what's required of them wow. I, I mean my mind cannot even go no, there you know I can't. Um, I dissociate when I, when, when, you know, because it's go there. I mean, uh, how do you do it? 
It's God alone that understands that was there all the time when all of this was happening. He was there. But because the parents had given the child over to the cult, there's legal right. And he says in Jeremiah, he says he stood weeping while his virgin daughter was being abused. So it's, you know, God was there all the time. All right, so now we have trapped emotions. There could be other reasons, such as weakness in the body or trauma, emotion, energy. And so, you know, we've got to look at all the possibilities of why this emotion won't go. So if the body is weak, you know, it's difficult to, to let go because they're so used to holding on. Um, and so we walk it through and we help the people, you know, so, so the therapist would help so much to discern what's going on and just to help the person to, to release that deep, deep pain. Many people who have been through extreme trauma have blocked out years of their lives. And that is what's so sad. You know, they get to 30, 40 when they start um, bleeding, as they say, bleed through, they start bleeding and they start having memories. And then when it comes out, they're just thinking, wasted years. How many wasted years? And they have to grieve the years that have been wasted. And the other sad thing, common, is many of them, you know, they've had their eggs taken from them. And so um, creepy. They've, they've used their eggs for whatever. And, and now they want their own children and there are no more eggs. You know, so... It's and you have two million eggs. That's average for a woman. And they you know, start it's so crazy when you think yeah. about that. I mean, that's yeah. basic. You know, it, there was a movie called Black Widow, um, and it's with Scarlett Johansson. And these, it's basically the story of of the the survivors. Mm -hmm. And what's so wild is he has them up on this unbelievably huge screen, and they're each one's a red dot where they are. But when these girls free get free from the the mind trauma, and they they unlock through this, you know, whatever thing that they smell or whatever, they then can tell each other like what we went through. And one of the things that the the sister had said was well, they literally take out all of our ability to reproduce. And here's all these young women who are these supposed, you know, super soldiers for this creep, and mm. they've all been sterilized. Mm. And this isn't, this isn't just a story. This is what happened to people. Yeah. It's, it's so real, so real. So, um, yeah, it's very, very sad, you know. So they, if they do marry, they want children, of course. You know, and then and then they can't. So there's just so many layers of of, of complex, you know, of pain, of pain that um, there are no words for what they have been through. So they remember almost nothing. So it's they they block out those the years, you know, because they've been through such extreme trauma um, that they remember nothing. So that's why when a survivor when you say, but why are you depressed? You know, can you remember what happened? And then they say, but I can't remember. I can't remember. I, I start remembering from about 10 or 12 years of age. Up, up until then, I don't remember a thing. Then you know you're dealing with some extreme trauma. So, um, yeah, it's really sad. Now, how do we... Is, now, is that true always if someone has um, blocked uh, their missing time? Is that always a trauma thing? Um, you know, Carmen, the old, old therapy way, um, before we started working with the energy and, and um, you know, the quantum, um, they would, they would have say, I can't remember, it, it was on the, the, the list, you know, the so list of questionnaires that you fill in to see how far are you on the scale. Oh, the, yeah, the disassociative. Yes, um, yes the disassociative. it was on the list. Yes. yes. And so, but that those are old questions. They are old, I mean, compared to what the young ones are going through now. Right. And so they, you know, they are using, um, it's it's techno sorcery. It is high level stuff. That is and, such a great word. I've never heard that before, techno sorcery. 
Yeah. And that's what I think AI is. I keep seeing all these people using AI and I feel like it's like the new Ouija board. Yeah. Scary. It's really scary. Yeah. Uh, The other day I watched a, a clip of a lady in China. She got so angry with this robot that she, uh, took a stick or a something and she started hitting this thing. She <laughs> That's hilarious. I saw for the, somebody had posted on Twitter, something similar. It was two guys having the very first, they called it the first, uh, uh, zoom fight or something like that. They were literally beating the computers. They were so mad at each other. <laughs> They definitely need to come to this channel and and listen to Amanda Bias, the tuning fork. <laughs> let, let the emotions go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so how do we find the trapped emotions? Like we said, the the old you know the old therapy way was um, I I can't remember, but what they have so perfected that I don't lose time. I remember my childhood. So what have they done? They've taken a photo album. And since they were small, they were told the story of their life, but it wasn't the real story. Oh my gosh, they did this in in Black Widow. You need to watch this movie. Really? Yes. Yes. I will. That's very interesting. Yeah. And you know why? Because they know how it works. Yeah, that's right. They do. They do know how it works. All right, so the emotional body code allows us to bypass the conscious mind completely. And so basically this is getting into how do I get to where those deep things are? How do I start to unlock a person's system that was so professionally programmed that nobody was ever supposed to discover it? And I tried it for a year, praying my heart out until the Lord said to me, sign up for my university. I mean, I've been to God's university since the beginning of when he called me, but this was another layer. And he said, the cloud has moved and you have to move with the cloud. And um, Seriously, one of my favorite books in the, in, yeah. in the Bible, Exodus. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So God, God is the one that moves the cloud. So if you don't move, he is the cloud. And if you don't move, when he moves, you're going to stay behind and you're not going to be effective. You, you'll be able to help, but not get through, right through into the system and to start unlocking what you need to unlock. So, um, yeah, this is, we've got to get to the subconscious mind. Working with a conscious mind is 10%, you know, of what, they, what, they, what their life has been. It's 10%. 90% is hidden. It's hidden. And so God, God is the God over the, over the subconscious mind. He created the subconscious mind. He brings forward what needs to come forward. And we pray um, and we, you know, we, we give examples of prayer. How do you pray um, before a session so that you are protected? You ask God to place his quantum shield between you and anything coming from the enemy, because you must know that, it, that, those that come to you for help have still got cult aligned back parts that they're not even aware of. They're not in touch with. And so they come to the session loaded. They come with bombs and all sorts of spiritual stuff, saboteur weapons that they're going to attack you with. And so we pray and we say, Father God, if we are going to, if we are in, in a danger in any way, We pray that you place a quantum shield now between us and the client and that you will stop this session if there's danger and that we will not be hurt. So there are certain things you have to put into place um, to make sure that you are protected. So we've, we've done this for a while now, you know, and you learn, you learn as you go. And so you bypass the conscious memory. And so what is interesting is, we access vital information about trapped emotions from the subconscious mind, not the conscious mind. Conscious right. mind, 10%. And so what is below the surface? What is going on where you can't, where the person, you can't get there? God himself, he is God over your subconscious mind. 
He has got everything written down. Everything's recorded that's ever happened to you. He's got it written down. He's got your back. He's got you. And when judgment day comes, he will deal with those that, that hurt you, that caused all of this in your life. And so don't be on the judgment seat. That's God's place. He's the judge. And all you must do is forgive. Let go. Let go. Otherwise, it's going to make you ill. And um, so, so we, we ask God, who is God over the subconscious mind, to highlight what it is. He, in his light, we see light. He is the big light. There, he is light. He is spirit and he is light. And so we, light is darkness has to flee. And so we pray that he will shine his light into the subconscious mind and highlight, light up that which we need to work with today. Because we declare from the beginning, Father God, we don't know where to go. Where to go. We don't know what to test. We don't know what, what is going on here. We haven't got a clue. We don't even know how to pray. But Holy Spirit, you were sent to us, Romans 8. And, and Holy Spirit, you are the one that will teach us how to pray. And, and even the groanings that come from, from our spirit, you interpret. And so you teach us how to pray. We don't know. Help us how to pray. How do we get this to come forward? How do we help this person to unlock that system of what happened to them? And so. This is very, very powerful, um, working with the Holy Spirit, co yeah, It makes me, um, I have a question, if you don't mind. Mm. Um, when you're working with somebody, are you in prayer the whole time? And that's when people are speaking and they're, you're asking questions that come to you. And because I was wondering, because I knew you probably wouldn't do <laughs> hypnosis. So I was no. wondering how that, yeah. And no. so I was wondering how that happened. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, no, whereas those that don't know the Holy Spirit or don't have the Holy Spirit with them and understand the word would do hypnosis. In other words, the, the problem is just, you know, when you do that, you're opening yourself up and you're placing yourself, subjecting yourself under that person's will. Yes. Saying, I submit. And then you don't know what's in this person's life because that stuff's going to download onto you. And that's the danger. You right. And that's why it's protective uh, for both people if yes, it's absolutely. through prayer. Yeah. Absolutely. We pray protection for the client as well as for ourselves because we're dealing with a very real enemy. And, and the client has come for help and hasn't come to hurt you. But, of course, we've got to be awake because there are – the back parts that are, are loaded, you know, that sure. would come in with, with they had been to, they always go to a ritual the evening before. We, we always, you know, when was the last time you were accessed? Last night. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Carmen, I, I will also share on how Neshama works. Neshama is that part of your spirit that is made in the image of Almighty God. And, and so the cult cannot destroy Neshama because then the person dies. And that is the part that keeps you alive. But we'll get to that as we, our next, our, our next one. Um, okay. So we are going to have a part three. Yeah. Yeah. So I think what we'll do is um, we, we can just flow from here, but now to get into the practical, to understand Neshama, because working with Neshama is so powerful so we, we then ask um, Holy Spirit to join with the person spirit, the Neshama, made in the image of God. And then we, we would say, you know, first answer. What is your first answer without thinking? Don't go into the brain, into the brain part, right. which is, you know, where you start right. reasoning. Don't go there. What is your first answer? And that's Neshama talking. And many times they say, oh, did I say that? How did I say that? Why did you know? And they're shocked with what come, came out of their mouth. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's okay then. But I'm sure I'm lying. I'm sure I'm lying. And so, well, be a good liar. You know, just speak it out. Just 
let it come because God will confirm. If this is God, if this is truth, God will confirm it because he is the God of truth. Right. And so we get a lot of, you know, we like to have the person to co-labor as well, because if they hear God, Absolutely. And they are able to, you know, then it's, it's like, like a confirmation. So God can show us stuff, but we zip and wait and wait for the, them to work with the Holy Spirit. So we teach them how to listen to their parts inside and to, to then you know, how to work inside <clears throat> so that there is, you know, they, it's just to co-labor. They will is active. They're looking for help. So, so it's awesome. pretty important. All right. So each time you trap an emotion, you get stuck in the middle of whatever traumatic event you were experiencing. Can you imagine if you've never had any release of your negative emotions your whole life of all those bad things that happened to you can you imagine how loaded you are with oh, yeah. negative frequencies and how ill it can make your body and so now you're stuck you're stuck in the middle of this trauma and that's why you keep on repeating things you keep on you, you stay in cycles of fear of depression of suicide you know there's a whole pattern that follows and this has been the story of your life and you wonder why but it's because you stuck in the middle of a trapped emotion of that traumatic e event you stuck there that emotion is stuck and it needs you need to get help to get it released and so there it is it's it's stuck in your body it can go and sit in any place a trapped emotion can sit in any place of your body it can be around the female organs it can be in your gut it can be around the heart. It can be in your mind. And so there's, there's a ball of energy. And I'm going to talk about the, the trapped emotions that form a ball of energy. And it's all negative. And then it, it starts resonating with the organs around it. So it doesn't stand still. It, it's not a ball and it's now static. It's now resonating. And, and it's going all the time, which then starts to affect your organs the thyroid gland and you know the lungs and and the heart and so you have all sorts of physical ailments and you don't realize it's actually a trapped emotion that for years you've just never had help to let it go and so instead of moving beyond your angry moment where you lost it or a temporary bout of grief or depression you retain this negative emotional energy within your body, potentially causing significant physical and emotional stress. And so, you know, if you are forever stressed out and you need, you're drinking all sorts of stress stuff and, you know, you, you, you need um, a sleeping tablet or you need, and I'm not, I'm not throwing stones at anyone. We all on our journey. But the thing is, you know, in the beginning, you could you could need a chemical to help you, but you can't stay there. You can't stay on the tablets. You can't stay drinking the drugs. You have to get to a place because you we've got the power of Jesus. It's resurrection power that raised him from the dead. So his, his power, his energy, his frequency is stronger than death. I mean, that's a wow. You know, because everybody thinks of death as, I mean, it is a horrible thing that, that you have to face, death experiences and things, but his resurrection power carries you through. And so if you've never had help, you really need to start dealing with whatever's going on in your life with the negative stuff. Emotions actually consist of well-defined energies that have a shape and a form. Isn't that interesting? It's not just nothingness. Yes. It's got a shape and a form. So the, the ball of energy has shaped itself into a certain form. Although they are not visible, they are very real. It's there and it's affecting you. They can interfere with proper function of your body's organs and tissues. So there can be a misalignment. 
So because of whatever has happened and now this ball of negative energy is, is lying, you know, over your heart, it's going to affect the beat of your heart, the rhythm of your heart. There will be a misalignment. It's going to affect your gut. If you've been through a lot of fear, um, anxiety, stress as a child, your gut is now misaligned because this trapped emotions of fear and all the negative stuff is pushing your tummy and, you know, misaligning and causing disease. So Absolutely. I, I hope that this is clear for people to understand. It's not just a nothingness. It's a shape and a form. And it's somewhere in my body where this is stuck and it's causing me to be ill wrecking havoc with my physical health so many times we go to a doctor and he gives me a drug but it's not going to take away the root it doesn't release the negative emotions and so where medical doctors learn about this they become so effective as medical doctors and they work with therapists and counselors to say listen i do believe this person has unforgiveness and bitterness in their heart they need ministry. Yes. And then I don't need to give the drug. I don't need to write the script. Yes. Because it's going to go. You know, one of my biggest re referrals is a doctor. Um, and it's just for mindfulness because she yeah. believes so much in it that she's yeah. like, I will, I will work with you, but, but really go talk to this woman because she can put you at peace. She can teach you how to get in peace. And that's, yeah. That's the foundation of the armor of God. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so if, if I have this ball of shape and form of, of, of negative emotions inside my body, it's going to cause pain. So I'm going to have chronic pain. I'm going to have fatigue, illness. No matter how great your suffering may be, the invisible energy of trapped emotions will remain undiagnosed by conventional medicine. So I can go to a doctor, but I'm just going to get a drug. And, I'm, you know, as I say, I have I really have compassion for those that need it. But don't stay there, please. You've got to move on because you've got resurrection power that's available to you. And even though it may be a major causative factor in your physical and emotional difficulties, which it's very real. I have chronic pain. I have headaches. I have migraine. I mean, it's real. I'm suffering. It takes me out of my job. I can't, I can't cope anymore. And so I need help. So I see that deal with these emotions with the Holy Spirit and apply the blood of Jesus. Bring in the blood of Jesus. And so I have a little picture here of a person that is sitting trapped with trapped emotions in a prison, but I've got the cross, the cross of Jesus, and apply the blood of Jesus so that those prison bars will be broken and those negative emotions released so that you can get out of the prison and the chronic pain because you know um common chronic suffering you are giving satan glory because your body is a temple i agree so if you are um you know if you walk in god's way because he's inside of you and you are aligned with him and his throne then you will bring him glory but if, if you're a born-again believer, but you've aligned yourself with Satan and you are not living a victorious life and you are suffering and, you know, bitter and angry and all of these things, then, then you, you can't give God glory in that, in that sense. There isn't a way because you, you are now giving power to Satan to beat you up. Amen. And so we really need to, to deal with, with whatever's in the way. And so in the physical world life is in the blood leviticus 17 verse 11 you know common when my son was under attack um yeah it was he was a young man and uh fell in love with a girl and um from the moment they were together i knew this is not his wife this you know something's wrong 
And then he would take me for coffee. Mom, is this my wife? And I'd say, well, God hasn't told me that. And then oh, he'd get so upset, you know, because he was in love with this girl. But I just had no peace. I had absolutely no peace that this, this is the, the, the girl for him, his wife. And um, anyway, she, um, it was high level. It was governmental level um, programming. All of that stuff came out. And he had, he went in for a, a, a very little, it was a little operation. He was a sportsman. And um, so his breathing, he had broken his nose through rugby and his breathing was, was blocked. And so they said, oh, we'll just straighten the septum and you'll be fine. So what had happened was they had nipped his main vein. You know, you have a main oh, artery wow. running in the nose. And they nipped it and slowly but surely he was bleeding to death. And I saw life is in the blood. And from the strapping fit young man that did racing internationally, uh, raced for the country, I saw him slipping away. It was, it was very scary. Yeah, that would be. Wow. Life is in the blood. In the spiritual world, Life is in the light. Yes. And also, the more <laughs> I, love, light, I love it. I love it. Yeah. The more light, what we are, we are light. And what we think we are, it must line up. We've got to believe and know who we are in God. And so if you have a trapped emotion, and this is such a good picture, you know, it's like somebody that's behind this veil pushing up against it, and I am trying so hard to get out of this prison, but I don't know how. I don't even know what's a trapped emotion. I don't even realize that I'm trapped in this prison of these negative emotions. It can affect my cravings. It can affect emotional eating and my weight. And so many times people are very frustrated because they're not losing weight. And they so badly want to. But a lot of times the root is emotional. And it can be trapped emotions that's holding you back. And now remember shape and form of the trapped emotions. And now you are struggling to lose weight because it's now affecting cravings and you become an emotional eater. And um, you will attract more of that emotion into your life. Because spirit draws spirit. And so, um, you know, whatever it is that you stuck with, that you're not letting go of, you're going to draw those people to yourself. And you're going to be battered over and over. You will be a victim over and over because you are drawing an abuser. You are drawing whatever it is that hurt you and you're holding on. You're going to draw those kind of people into your life because that's the label you carry. And so you will always tend to feel that emotion more readily and more often than you otherwise would. You can think of a trapped emotion as being like a ball of energy because it's exactly what it is. Shape and form. It's a ball of energy that is now settling somewhere in my body and causing huge problems for me. All right. So now let's look at it. Do you attach, sorry, um, do you attach... Um any connection between parasites and these forms? I would definitely connect it. I mean, with the okay. knowledge that, that we've had just in the last three years, Carmen, yeah. and what has come forward, um, I would definitely look at parasites as well. Thank you. And and also the enemy is sending in parasites and, and things into our lives. So, yeah, um, you know, also heavy metals, um, there are certain things that, that we are being loaded with, we're being injected with, that is causing a lot of our sicknesses as well. Right. And that's why what, what you're sharing here is so important, because it's not just the people who've been programmed professionally, it's the people who have been programmed professionally through schools and, yes. and yes. television and culture yes. as yes. well. I, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the normal people, I don't know what's normal, but 
<laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yes. And yeah. that's why that's why like so many people really do need to have that exodus moment of, hey, you know, my life is really cloudy. Things aren't mm-hmm. feeling right. I need mm-hmm. to sit my butt down until the cloud moves. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's right. That's right. Do so the work. Up, yeah. Up until now, we've looked at things that's happened to me. So it's, you know, I've been through trauma and those emotions are stuck. Now let's look what we, what we can inherit. And so we see in many ways, we are the sum total of what our ancestors were. The virtues they had may be our virtues, their strengths, our strengths. And in a way, their challenges could be our challenges. So whatever strong men, our mom and dad and grandpa and grandma didn't fight and overcome, we will face and have to fight them. And so there's definitely this generational curses that um, that I'm carrying. So there's a download also of emotional baggage that is not even mine. But because of the sperm and the ovum and the whole principle of generational curses, I also inherit the negative emotions that's come down the bloodline. And so we see scientists have long speculated about the possibility of emotionally charged memories being passed from one generation to another. And so um, I I had this experience, I think I've shared with you, but I'm just going to do a reminder of um, my children, when they finished studying here in South Africa, they got their degrees and then decided to go overseas to do postgraduate. Um, And the country that they chose was the country that I married, Roli. Roli's mom was English, his dad was Afrikaans. And so we had, they had the, the Boer War and the English War in their home, you know, because of, of the dynamics. Um, and so I had this mother-in-law that was very English. And um, she had all the things of the queen and, you know, his grandpa was also stood God. One, it was one of the gods for the queen. And I had this thing in me. Who does she think she is? Who does the queen think she is? You know, come on. Because we didn't have queens and, and so on here in, in sunny South Africa. And uh, so where did my children decide to go and study? They go to England. And they go and study there, postgraduate. And I get there and I am so churned up inside I mean it's cooking it's like a boiling pot inside of me and I'm thinking what are they doing in England you know that there's they can just come home there's so much more for them at home and anyway I um realized I've got a problem and 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 I'm supposed to be this born again believer you know and what's going on with me why am I so upset with the English so I got on my knees I waited for them to go to school to work and whatever I was alone And I went on my knees on English soil. And I said, Father God, what's going on here? Please explain to me because I don't know what's going on in my own heart. And the next minute I saw a concentration camp. And I saw the English soldiers. And how they in South Africa had put our grandmothers and mothers and children into concentration camps they it was the first concentration camps before the holocaust it was the south african concentration camps that the english caused and there was the women were raped um children died in their arms it it, starvation it was it was just such a horrible dark time sure and that's where god showed me that i'd inherited hatred for the english Nothing was done to me, but it was done on my bloodline. Right. And that those negative emotions came down upon me. And I really, really had to deal with it. And I said, God, I, I bring this before you and I forgive. I forgive the English for, for what they did. Now I know where it's coming from. Right. And um, after I stood up and, and, you know, 
cried my last tears and let go of the anger and all those things that I'd felt and I named them and I just verbalized and let it go. The English blessed my children and wow. unbelievably how so cool. they blessed my children. And, and it's just getting rid of the curse and, and choosing the blessing. Yeah. Because well, you know, it's so interesting too. Gosh, I never even thought of this before, but you know how there's such a debate about um, reincarnation and different things. Mm. And I, I have opinions, I don't know, but it makes you wonder if when somebody has a so-called past life experience, if it isn't a true bloodline experience that someone in their bloodline or attached to someone in their bloodline. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it could yes. go on and on. It could yeah, be a crazy sure. network. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think we've got to think wider than what we have been, you know, it, it's very possible common that, um, you know, what I expect, I mean, I carried it, I carried it and the English had done nothing to me, you know, absolutely nothing, but it was this, intense hatred that I couldn't explain and I mean you guys in the states you've got you've got the um you know the American Indian you've got the Eskimos you've got there's there's a lot of history in our different countries and we're walking with stuff that's maybe not even our own stuff but it's generational and it's inherited trapped emotions so you could sit with an inherited trapped emotion of bitterness that's become a root. And now I'm affecting everybody else around me. You know, so it's, it's really something that one should pray about. And the Holy Spirit is so faithful. He will show. He, he is so faithful. He will show you if there's something that's going on, you know, something that's stuck. But pray about it. Bring it before God and say, Father, I'm... Is this my pain? Is this, you know, my struggle? Or is it mom and dad? Is it something they downloaded onto me? And, um, yeah, it was so interesting <clears throat> about this little girl that um, when she started to walk, she was 14 months old, and she started to walk. And um, she would walk very strangely. She walked with her legs straight and, you know, like, straight legs and apart, apart, they were apart. And then they were doing these studies at the university and they they started to work on the, uh, the generational download. They started to work on, on trapped emotions and they wanted to understand it. So this professor, he advertised, he said, please, you know, if you've got some interesting case, we will, we will do the research, come to us. So this, this mommy took her little girl there and he's, she had to fill in a questionnaire. Had she had diseases before the time? Was she ill? Whatever, you know. And then um, she said, well, this is my daughter's problem. She's walking, you know, with her legs open and, and, and straight legs. You know, it's not normal. So he picked up the little one. He'd gone through mom's forms and he saw that mom was born with club feet. And then she had to have a stick put between her legs and walk with special shoes because they had to break her feet and correct them and then have the stick between the legs. And it's mom that walked that way. And so he picked up the little one, 14 months old. I mean, there's no understanding, really. So put her and looked in her eyes, knew that they are the windows of the spirit spoke to her spirit and said, you were not born this way. There's nothing wrong with your legs. You can walk properly. And she looked at him, hopped off his lap. You know, he said to her, listen, it's mommy. Mommy had the problem. It was mommy's problem. It's not your problem. She just kept looking at him and her spirit was obviously drinking it all in, hopped off his, his lap and started walking normally 100 so cool. she was right there the truth released the lie and she was set free and so that was also a downloaded trapped emotion that she had inherited so this is really an interesting world you know that uh, deuteronomy 5 verse 9 god is our scientist 
You shall not worship the other gods, God says, or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous, impassioned God, demanding what is rightfully and uniquely mine. And so visiting, avenging the iniquity of the fathers on the children, calling uh, the children to account for the sins of the fathers to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me. And so, you know, I asked my grand. My grand would go to church twice a Sunday, a very devout Christian, a wonderful born-again believer, and yet, you know, she, she would read the tea leaves, you know, do divination with tea leaves. Yeah, sure. But she didn't like doing it because she, she was convicted it wasn't right. And so she stopped. She stopped at a stage. She didn't want to do it. And I kept on saying, oh, please, Brand, don't you want to tell me, you know? And um, she wasn't happy to do it. But, you know, I said to her, Gran, you love God. Yes, I do. I love God. But the minute I continue in sin, God sees it that I hate him. Because he has told me not to do it. It's part of his, his word, his commandment. Don't go after their gods. Don't go into witchcraft. Don't go into divination. Don't do those things. Because God then will see that you hate him. So, so you see, people get, to, you know, get confused and they say, well, I don't hate God. I said, well, that's not the point. The fact is you're still continuing going after other gods. You're into witchcraft. You're into all of this stuff. Um, and, and God sees it then that you are hating him. You're not being obedient and walking in his ways. Okay, and so this that I inherit is known as epigenetic inheritance. Studies show great promise in helping us to understand how the experiences of our parents and ancestors affect us in the here and now. And so it's on the DNA and um, the DNA strands and the messages are there, the downloads are there, and that's how I then inherit this, um, this genetic inheritance. And the descendants of Holocaust survivors were found to have genetic changes in the DNA code. Isn't that interesting? It's, yeah, it's, how, so, do they even, how do they even figure that out? It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And so we know that um, you know, there are Holocaust survivors that have those memories um, of what was passed down on their DNA. So it was so traumatic that they, even their DNA changed, you know? So uh, specifically in the areas of the code that were responsible for regulating the stress hormones. Isn't that interesting? Because trauma and stress. Yeah, they know, didn't have they peace. Through, yeah, they went through horrific stress, um, the trauma. And so now the DNA has changed and that is what you inherit. So then you are highly strung, um, fearful, depressed, you know, all of that stuff that gets downloaded to you. And so they were found to be more vulnerable and less able to deal with the results of stress. They were more likely to suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. And so the marker will be on the DNA when you've had a generation that has gone through terrible, like the Holocaust. I mean, there's been so many Holocausts, um, you know, throughout life, but there's been some very, very sad stories. And just to realize that, that the following generations are going to struggle. Okay, and now we see, keep in mind that when we talk about inherited emotions, we are talking about baggage that we share within a biological family. So I want you to um, just, if you look at the chart, um, just to see, you know, where, if you look at the orange, um, so you start with, with one, two, three, orange, looks like the female part, let's say the female part, the blue, let's say it's the guys, and look where it pops up again. You see the third, the, 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 that's the first generation, second, there's no orange, Third yeah. generation, you can see it popping through. And so it's just interesting that you are sharing um, the same frequency 
of, mm -hmm. of this inherited emotion. So mm -hmm. if you release it, let's say granddad comes for ministry and granddad has passed it on and there are two or three or four of the grandchildren that have now got the same passed on frequency. What is so amazing is that when a trapped emotion is inherited, you receive this energy at the moment of conception. So I've taken the ovum and the sperm and the penetration, at the moment of penetration, there's light because it's life. It's God and God alone can give life. And so at that moment, it's God's light that gives life. Yes. Satan can't. He, he steals the, a sperm and the ovum and he, play, he tries to play. And he says, you know, he's God, but he can't because it's God's tools. It's God's building bricks that, that he's using to play around with. But when God brings the life and God and God alone brings life, there's the light. It's God's light that brings the life. And so you receive also the download on your bloodline. You receive this inherited emotions that comes with the sperm on dad's side or from mom's side at conception from either the sperm or the egg. And so we see that you can inherit trapped emotions from your birth mother and father, even if you've never met them. So it doesn't, doesn't mean you've got to know them. That's why I inherit. No, it comes on the sperm and the ovum. Right. And so it's there. It's, it's that download that you've received. And so releasing trapped emotions can help us to make changes on a genetic, energetic level that can make huge improvements in how we feel emotionally and physically. Amazing, amazing the breakthrough that we can feel if we release these trapped emotions and, and how we can then feel the healing. We can feel better. We can sleep better. We don't have the chronic pain. So there's a lot of things that happens on an energetic level. I also have energy for the, for the day. If you have children, they have probably inherited at least one trapped emotion from you, at least. There's, of course, more, but they... Let's let's say one. You probably inherited some emotional baggage from your parents and your grandparents. You've also inherited. And so we can just see how it goes down the generational line. The same frequency of the same trapped emotion is now being passed on to the next generation. Releasing an inherited emotion we are actually identifying an emotional vibration shared by two or more people, sometimes many. So let's say grandpa comes for ministry and grandpa had six children. And then from those six children, they all had five children. So imagine now we're adding up, adding up numbers and the download of the of the inherited trapped emotion is the same frequency within all those people coming from grandpa. If we release that frequency from grandpa, everybody else gets released because it's exactly the same frequency. So that is what's so amazing that each one of those people don't have to go for ministry. It, they just feel this release when grandpa's gone. So it's, it's good to deal with the older generation, help them because that's going to help the younger ones. Just those frequencies will go. It will lift and go. So um, because this unique vibration is shared, we have found that we can effectively release it from anyone who has received it all in one go. That's the good news about this inherited emotion and um, identifying the frequency that is shared among the family members and it will all lift if grandpa you know if the oldest one can deal with it or it doesn't have to be grandpa if he's not ready for it or not alive anymore let's take the next one down so um, that can bring a big release for the family a fascinating principle is quantum physics and that is um, that one energy 
may exist simultaneously in an infinite number of places at the same time. And so we know because we interrelated and it's quantum, and so um, infinite number of places at the same time. And this is what happens when a trapped emotion is passed from one generation to another. Um, so it's the quantum multiplication that takes place. And so this, this picture I thought was, was also very sharp. You know, it speaks <laughs> a lot of words. And so even though it may have originated centuries ago, this trapped emotion frequency, a trapped emotion that has been shared from one generation to another is still only one energy. Although it's gone down the generations, it's still that one energy. And when we release it, it can help so many others in the same bloodline. And so releasing it from a person in a line will effectively release it from any and all that are holding that energy in the bloodline clearing the dark energy in the DNA. So it's good news. It's Absolutely. Good news when we deal Absolutely. with it. So as well as trying to realign and find the root cause through all the trauma, emotional baggage and environment uh, toxins. And so that's also a good picture where you feel you trapped. You see through, you can look out of the bottle, you can see the world going on, but you're not part of it. You're just not living life. You feel the world is going on in front of you, around you, but you're not, you're just not connected. You're not connected to your emotions. You're not connected. You, you feel that you can't give yourself. Um, you're struggling to give yourself. You're sitting in that bottle. You're stuck. You're trapped. And so there is a way to freedom. There is a way to find the root, to deal with the trauma, the emotional baggage, and the environmental toxins. Okay, the heart wall, and we're wrapping up with the heart wall, and we see, okay, what is going on with my heart? Because that's where my heart, my emotions are, where I love, where I feel. Let's see. During times of emotional distress, your emotional heart can feel really hurt, broken. And this is where the word heartache and heartbreak comes from. It's because my heart is really broke. I feel it's aching. It's aching. There's a pain in my heart. I feel that pain. I heard a really great quote the other day. I wish I could remember who it was that said it. But they said that there is no such thing as heartbreak. It's ego break. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so true in so many ways. But yeah. I understand that this is, you know, spirit based. Yeah. 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 But it is the ego that that somehow filters it, it, you know. It does. It does. Yeah. So this may prompt your body to put up some form of protection. When you get hurt, when you get rejected, you put up walls. You put up the walls. Now my heart is being hurt. I've had a love a disappointment. Something's happened to me. And so a wall around the heart is to keep me safe so that I won't be hurt again. And that will cause me to not fall in love again, to not be able to give myself, to be stuck in the bottle. I see the world outside there. But because I am, I've so protected my heart, I've built this wall around my heart, a heart wall. I'm not able to love. I'm not free to love. But you can't build a wall of nothing, right? What do I build this wall with? What emotions do I use? So building materials of a hot wall and most common excess energies in the body through trapped emotions. And so my hot wall to protect myself, I'm going to build that wall with trapped emotions. They're there and I'm going to use them. That's what I do. That's what my body does. I'm going to protect my heart. The problem is that the heart wall doesn't dissolve on its own, even if you don't need it anymore. It's still there. And I've got to let it go. I've got to let break the wall down. Otherwise, I stay stuck. And so 
um, yeah, I had this wall as well. Oh, my, my, my. This was my protection. <laughs> <laughs> and so think of living with a hot wall as living in a bomb shelter. It's necessary short term to sure. protect you yes. while the bombs are falling. But if you continue to live in there, you'll likely feel sad. Beautiful illustration. Frustrated. And you could even end up with more problems down the road. And so, yeah, we go through times of bombs in our lives, falling around us. And so how do I protect myself? I put a wall around my, I put a hot wall up. And then the bombs stop falling. Now I want to love again. And I can't. I can't give myself. I can't trust. I don't trust because I have a hot wall. And so I'm disconnected. I'm sitting in that bottle all alone. I'm lonely. I'm frustrated. I'm sad. And I don't understand why life is going past. I'm not living it. I'm not alive. I'm not connected because to be alive, I must be connected. Relationships, that's the key. And so if I don't have that because of my heart wall, I'm pretty lonely. It's a very sad place to be, but I don't even know. And so uh, thinking of living with a hot wall as living in a bomb shelter. And so I took a picture of an old bomb shelter because many of our stuff happened years ago. Mm -hmm. And I put up the walls. And it's necessary short term to protect sure. you while the bombs are falling. But if you continue to live there, that's when you feel the sadness, the disconnect just look at that bomb shelter right um, exactly i've repeated myself here on purpose to let it sink in <laughs> <laughs> pile drive it pile drive it it helps yeah. it works yeah and so sitting in that bomb shelter no bombs are falling anymore it's over but the world is still carrying on and you're not connected you're feeling sad and uh, you're going to have more problems. And so our spirit, this is also a very, a, a picture with lots, of, with lots of words, speaking lots of words. And this is our spirit within us does not like those feelings. I want to get out here. Help me. Help me. I don't want to be stuck in here anymore. Life is gone. I've wasted years. I don't want to be here anymore. Help me to get free. Science believe that if you have this experience more than a couple of times in your life, your subconscious mind may form an energy wall to protect your heart against further heartache. And we refer to this wall of energy as the heart wall. So now you understand it. You've had how many experiences in your life? And now I've put up this wall. And um, it's a protection. Scientists first began measuring the heart's electrical field with the discovery of the electrocardiogram machine, the EKG, in 1895. Isn't that fascinating how long ago they yes. already had this information? And that's why I guess it's a K and not a C. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was a German. I think that's why the K that's is. That's what, yeah. Yeah. And so um, we are happy that the medical world can measure our heart, can measure the electrical field of our heart. And so if it's physically, the, when they do a reading and they read all the organs in my body, the one that has the biggest reading is my heart. It pushes it right out. And so not too long ago, a new machine was developed called the magnetocardiogram the MCG, and it measures the magnetic field of the heart instead of the electrical field. And this is a really- and That's probably more powerful. Yes, absolutely. Because remember our magnetic field and God's magnetic field with, with the North Pole? Scientists found that the heart's magnetic field extends up to 12 foot, which is for us in meters, 3.5 meters, in diameter around the body. Can you imagine how big this magnetic field is 
from your heart. So it's, it's not just the other organs, it's your heart has got the biggest field. And that is why when someone comes into your magnetic field, there could be that propulsion. And you just say, I don't know what it is, but I just can't connect. I can't connect with this person. But there's this, there's the, it just is this, this repulsion of a something's wrong. They could be realigned with Satan's <laughs> throne. And, and you are aligned with God's throne. And so there's this spiritual clash. But it's the heart that feels it. You know, so you've got this huge area around you. And um, what we then see is every beat of the heart sends a message to all the cells of the body. So now if my heart picks up something, it's going to send it throughout my body. All my cells will get the message. You know, it's funny um, when you said that, what came to me is when I'm in joy, I actually feel it in my heart. Like I, I feel like it's that dance and I can feel like it's boom, boom, boom. And yeah. my breath, I feel like is the peace. And I think it's interesting that like when I breathe, I can, I can make myself go into peace. Mm. And when I just focus in on my heart, I can I can find joy. It, it sometimes takes a while, but I, I just think that's fascinating. I, I, I oh, never okay. thought of I never thought of it as far as sending messages to all the yeah. cells. Yes. So 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 the heart has got a brain. I knew that. I it's knew not, it had its neurons. Yeah. yeah. But now you understand, you know, that the that the message is going throughout your body. And especially if you're fearful, you know, I mean you know, all the all the um the effects on your body. And so your brain in your head obeys the messages sent by the heart. Isn't that fascinating? So your heart, that's why the Bible says, God, your heart above all else. And I'm thinking of what you spoke last week, Carmen, when you spoke about how you were upset at the hospital and how you went into the shopping center and there was this, you watched this this young lady that so was cute. So, yeah. Full of joy. And you she brought my heart back. Choice. You had to make a choice and you spoke to your heart. You calmed yourself. And that sent the message throughout your body. And you and just then God it. straightened awesome. out the crooked places. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. And then the heart can think for itself. Isn't that fascinating about your heart? So now if I have a hot wall, it's serious. It's yes. not a light thing. It's serious. If I have built a huge thick wall around myself, I need to deal with a hot wall. And that that will be able, that will help me connect. That will help me with relationships. It will help me love again. It will help me trust. Then what else do I see about my heart? The heart has the ability to remember things. That is interesting. And then the heartbeat of the person sending that love or affection becomes measurable in the magnetic brain waves of the recipient. So if I if I sit here and I look at Roly and I send him love, my heart is warm and I feel the love. When he receives it, his brain is going to tell him, I love it. Isn't that amazing? And it'll get to his heart. And yes. then we synchronize. Yes. That's why I, I really try to sell mothers on not worrying about their children, because I do believe that the hearts are synchronized and that they feel it. Hmm. Amen. Yes, absolutely. All right. So let's think about this for a moment. And now. Just, just this hot wall. Scientific studies indicate that there is communication taking place between all of us all, at the, all the time. The human heart is both a sender and a receiver of information. And so I've got the thoughts in my mind. My heart has got love. And all I'm thinking is love. And I want to send it to Roly or my children, or my grandchildren, I mean, they know, and, and they start the feelings, and so it's a, it's a sender, 
and a receiver um, at the same time. And so it seems that the heart sends energy, which is love, the energy of love. We can receive that energy in return. And then here is just a picture of the heart. We interconnected. This is quantum. And I send my love along the lines, which is the love cords, the love bonds that we have. And I send it to my loved ones. And it's so important that we do that, this regularly. You know, I can't on, on, on the, the wedding day say, I love you and never say it again. You know, remember I told you so many years ago, I love you. I haven't changed my mind yet. <laughs> still there. I yeah. think men are more famous for that. Yeah, that's true. Or you forget to tell somebody how beautiful they are because yeah. you take it for granted or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. So Ezekiel 36, 26 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take out the heart of stone out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. And that is the stone is the wall and I need to have that removed. And so the trapped emotions, I've gone and built this wall and they have to come down one by one by one. And so maybe I can get 50, 60, 100 emotions. You know, that that's around the heart. I cannot bundle them all together and release them all at the same time because each emotion has got its own frequency. If I do that, the person is going to overload, is going to back off and shut down. And you're not yes, going to. Yes, that's true. Them. That's true. And so you have to take it one by one. You speak to the body and you say, release fear in the name of Jesus let it go out of the body and out of your energy field out of your magnetic field let it go so you take it one by one and that's important people try and do shortcuts and they bundle them all together and they think whoa we just let the whole bundle go you're not getting anywhere you're wasting your time and so it's really important to understand each emotion is a frequency that sure, I've built sure. into a wall. All right, so now symptoms of a heart wall. Trouble connecting in relationships or friendships. Oh, look at that picture. That is such a cute picture of my heart that <laughs> I've got a wall. Betrayal, bitterness, and unfair, and frustration. Yep. And that's how I build my wall. All my so, guys out of jail had, had heart walls. Yeah. Every one of them. Everyone. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, suppressed immune system so you get sick often if a, if a flu comes around you got it if this comes around you got it you know that your your immune system you know if you look at the survivors and what they've been through they, oh, yeah. they really suffer they really suffer and they need um you know like a, a a nutritionist that will help them to eat properly get their gut health you know all of that stuff so that the immune system can pick up um, numbing out or trouble feeling. Now, this was very strong in my life, and I, I'm not a survivor. And so with the trauma growing up with my dad and the alcohol and all this, all the, the aggression, so much aggression in our home, <clears throat> I numbed. I numbed out my feelings because I had this thick wall. I can remember. Um, you know, when I asked God, show me the root, where did I start hardening my heart? Where did I get this heart of stone from? Such a great question. Everybody keep that in mind. Put that, yeah. write that down, bring it into prayer with you. That was yeah. beautiful. <clears throat> so I asked God and he, he showed me a picture as a little girl. And I remember every afternoon when my dad would come home from work, I would run to meet him. Super excited to see my dad you know for a child a daddy is is the hero and you have the longing in a child's heart is to have God with skin on and that's your daddy and so I would run to meet him and I have my little arms up daddy, daddy, daddy. and I had those experiences where he would pick me up and then carry me home but one day my little brother, who was two and a half years younger than me, started walking. And he was the cutest 
thing. He was really such a beautiful baby. And he had curly, curly blonde hair and these big eyes and the long lashes. And again, I saw my dad coming and I'm super excited and I go running, running, running. Daddy, daddy, pick me up. And he pushed me aside and he took, pushed, he put his hands out and he took my brother. And the pain of being rejected. And Sadistically, <laughs> that, that's yeah. mean. Yeah. And, and the second day it happened and the third day it happened. And so it continued. And then I stopped putting up my arms and God said, right. brick by brick, I built this wall. Yes. Before I was six years old, I built a heart of stone and it was protection. And I thought, well, if my dad doesn't want me, I don't want him. So you start forming yep. the ways of thinking and I numbed. I started numbing my feelings and I didn't realize it was happening. And it was only when I was an adult and I'm trying to, now I've got to live in a marriage and I have to love my children and that I realized I, I'm struggling. I am struggling. And I didn't know why. Where right. does it come from? How come other mummies are so kind and gentle and patient? And, and, and I'm not there. And it's because of this heart of stone. And so this, this numbing is horrible. It's really horrible. And that's where you, you are blocking your purpose. And I never realized that that is what was happening. You know, you want... Father, why did you give me birth? What do you want me to do? How must I live my life? And then to realize, but I've now got a heart of stone. I've got a hot wall. And it's blocking my purpose. I can't find my destiny. I don't even know who I am. What must I do for God? I'd lost. I mean, I didn't know my purpose. Right. Did I search? Did I search? Running from prophet to prophet, trying to find my purpose. But it's because of my heart. And I never realized. And so <clears throat> let's think about numbing. I just want to end with a couple of thoughts around numbing because so many of us are there and we just never realized. And so <clears throat> this is one of the most common ways that we experience our heart wall and don't even realize it. Numbing out can be an addiction. Oh, man, when I saw that. <laughs> Oh, it was horrible to realize that there's an addiction here. You want to keep that hot wall. And it can be that feeling of knowing that you should feel something more intensely, but you don't know how to. I remember I so badly wanted the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I didn't know how to. I didn't know how to. See. And then, and then. I heard God say, but just drink my living water. And I said, God, where? How? How do I? Where's the cup? Where's the cup? <laughs> just give me the water. I want that water. But I didn't know. I didn't be know. Still. How to be still. Be still oh, and know that God. I am God. Be still. And um, I, people think they even, I mean, I honestly believe that if people were to sit still enough and, mm -hmm. and, just each thing that bubbles up, you sit with it with God, you can heal yourself. I really believe it. I think yeah. it's helpful to have counselors. I think it's helpful yeah. to have deliverance. I, but yeah. how encouraging is it that we really aren't alone and we have God and we could be stuck in, we could be stuck in a real cell and, yeah. and be able to sit quietly yeah. and hear from him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So you, you know, you're supposed to feel something like with my children. I know I was supposed to have a tender heart and patient and gentle and all these beautiful things I'm seeing other mothers, but I didn't know how. I didn't know how. I just didn't have it. And, I, you know, you know there's something missing, but how do I get there? And so this one is painful, especially if it happens later in, in your life. You know, you remember what those feelings feel like 
but you have trouble experiencing them, you know, because maybe you could love at a stage, but then something happened and you hurt and you shut you 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 shut yourself off. You got got into that bottle, and that's where you are. You're stuck, and so it's a way to not let yourself be hurt again. So that's why you numb, numb out your feelings. You can't feel. Once a hot wall is completely gone, your ability to feel positive emotions will become much stronger. There's a period of rebalancing, and it's going to take time to, once you start breaking down the hot wall, letting those emotions go, there is a period of rebalancing. Most people feel lighter, like something has been taken off their chest. Something's lifted. Something's changed. I can handle things easier now. I feel better now than before. I don't get so angry anymore. Right. Um, things are different. And People so that, that have anxiety so, get chest pressure. You know, it yes, feels like chest uh, yeah, pressure and yeah, like they can't yeah. breathe. Yes. Yes. And then when that lifts, oh. So they can start to see what their purpose is and what regular trapped emotions or vows are. Like, it's it's not a guarantee that if we deal with all the trapped emotions, you'll never have emotions again like that. But now you have a choice to let them go. You can see what are trapped emotions or vows or, you know, inner vows and, and, and deal with it, process it the right way. Once yes. the wall has gone, you're able then to manage your life, processing and letting go. And work towards healing those parts of their story. All the pieces of your life will not magically correct themselves. You still have to work to do with the Holy Spirit. And so it's, it's like this ongoing process. Washing in the water of the word. You know, <clears throat> get into the water with the Lord. And, and just cleanse. Once the hot wall is gone, there is such a breakthrough. But it's then an ongoing process of just walking every day with the Holy Spirit. What will happen is that you will no longer feel the confusion and the blockages you used to have. Things will not trigger the fear or panic or unworthiness that you used to feel. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that is yeah. awesome. So That's I trust awesome. that um, part two is, has helped um, many people to uh, know how to deal with it, know what an emotion is, yeah, and to start working with, with their pain. Yeah, it's really cool. And as you were talking, I felt like, you know, when you're dealing with people who've been through so much trauma, the, the thing about taking that wall down is they feel like they might become a victim again, or they might, but yeah. what happens just the opposite, um, as you take the wall down with, with the Holy Spirit, when, when you're yeah. doing it with the Holy Spirit, it's almost like it gets replaced with a discernment um wall <laughs> and and it's it's this beautiful um I, i'm in the right current i'm yeah. i'm finding truth more often yeah. god's delivering me to these places um and it, it's just the opposite of what the fears are that oh if yeah. i take this wall down i'm gonna get hurt yeah yeah not no, that we won't have you know times of hurt yeah sure yeah but but you're able to handle it in a much better way you know it's it is easier to deal with yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you're yeah. also coming from, in order to, in my opinion, in order to take down the walls, you actually have to deliver the faith. The anointing has to come on. And yeah. when it does, you you get the full armor and you're able to be aware of when there's pieces of the armor missing. And one of them is, the, is peace. And if you don't have peace, it's really difficult to make good decisions. Mm -hmm. And so then you go, okay, I'm, I'm knocked off center. I got to get back to peace. And it, it becomes easier and easier yeah. Um, yeah. once you've been there. It's like, you know, just like if you've been someplace, it's easier yeah. to get there. You don't need directions anymore. You just know how to get yeah. there. That's right. That's right. You, you know the inner, inner part of the heart and how it works. 
And also, you know, Carmen, if you've, if you've lost someone, you know, like in a grieving process mm -hmm. or a divorce or anything really traumatic in your life, mm -hmm. um, like you said, the first time, the first stage is that letter you wrote, you know, where you had to get it out, which I think was, was very um, therapeutic. I think it was awesome. You know, I was doing it. it yeah, I was doing it for that reason. It. I hadn't quite yeah. been, I hadn't gotten my oil yet. Let's just say yeah. that. Yeah. So. But you were verbalizing the truth of what you felt. And that was the beginning process of then, you know, dealing with it, proce processing um, but I think, you know, once once you dealt with that and when you look back, you could see where you were and where you are now and mm -hmm. that you've grown, you've really yeah. grown. Mm -hmm. And so it just makes it easier. You know, I, I really struggled with emotions. I really, really did um, because of the heart wall. Sure. A and I felt so guilty. I felt so you know, come on, why should I struggle like this? I shouldn't be battling like this. But I did, especially, you know, with my children and the journey and mm -hmm. and then asking their forgiveness and crying with them and working through our pain together and, you know, just ha having them understand my heart. And so it was so beautiful to get all my messages this morning on Mother's Day, you know, from my children and um, just the blessings. It was so beautiful just to share with them. They mommies themselves now, you know, and even my son and my son-in-laws and just the blessings that they released. It was, it's, it's such a blessing and an honor to have family. Yeah. Oh, you absolutely. Absolutely. So awesome, really. And my, my little grandchildren, each one so unique and special. And that's what life is all about, is to be able to love with my whole heart and give and, and also receive. And I remember my eldest granddaughter was a one of the birthdays and I'd had my heart wall done and all of that was, was you know, was gone. And <laughs> she came to me on my birthday and she, she looked me in the eyes and she said, Gran, do you know that you are loved? And it was like... <laughs> Oh, and I said, yes, I do. I receive I really it. I'm going to roll around in all that love. <laughs> yeah, I really do. And she just gave me such a hug. And she says, Granny, I love you so much. You know, so, yeah, I realized how much I've grown, how much I'd, you know, come along the way of right. what it used to be. It's such a place of freedom. Right, right. Such a, it's such, such a place of joy. Yeah. Um, and so a, a couple of people are asking about who you would suggest as a quantum counselor. And then they're asking about specific people. I'm not going to ask about specific people here publicly. Mm -hmm. um, people are welcome to to email um, Canaan Ministries mm -hmm. and, sure. and, and see what you guys are suggesting for here mm -hmm. in the States. I just, I don't want Amanda to get caught. <laughs> What if she doesn't like them and then she's stuck going, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah, yes. no, I'll be happy to share. I'll be happy. Okay. And it's okay. also people that I've met and I know, you know, being there, um, it's marriage. It's, 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 you've got to live the life. You've got to have the victory too. Um, mm -hmm. But that I trust, you know, so yeah, yeah. We, definitely we can, we can chat. But you know, common since COVID, um, so many have gone on to Zoom and Skype counseling now. So it doesn't matter, you know, True. and you're really giving guidelines. Um, yeah. you, you're just the coach, really, yep. you know, yep. but you do need safe people, I agree. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so as you take down those walls, you got to make sure that you replace it with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And Come it can, and it can go quickly. I mean, I, I can't speak for SRA. I don't work with people. Um, but, but I've literally helped people see what's true in their own hearts, what's true in their own bodies. Um, mm. I've just, I've just been the flashlight, right? It's already there. Mm. And mm. when they were able to see it, but quickly, like, you know, three to four or five, sessions with somebody and yeah. i know for myself when i made the decision i am fixing this i'm going mm. in 
Mm -hmm. um, eight weeks. I was, I was mm -hmm. really in a different place mm -hmm. eight weeks later, Absolutely. not a victim. Now, do yeah. I still catch myself being a victim of, you know, little vapors of things? Yes, mm -hmm. but, but mm -hmm. nowhere near like it was. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Do you have any last words, Amanda? Oh, um, can I, <laughs> um, can I do something different and ask Rolly to pray? Uh -huh. I was literally, oh. that is so cool. I, I was literally thinking it'd be so cool if he came on sometime. Yes, yeah. please. Come roll. Roll. Thank you so much. I've been Day. wanting to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mother's Day, so you can give a, a father's blessing for the for the mothers. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> to take all those heart walls down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, how are you? Good to meet you. I've heard nice so much to about meet you. you as well. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for sharing your wife. She is a blessing to so many of us in the world. Uh, she can uh, she can share, she can talk, and she's very happy in life. So <laughs> you just have to give her another chance. <laughs> yeah, well, Father, we thank you that we can come here this evening. We thank you, Father, we can raise and praise your name. We thank you, Father, you know the hearts and the needs of every single person that's listening to this message and we know you father you are the one that has the ability to speak into their lives to touch them in a way that's special and i'd ask you father to uh, let the holy spirit really flow over their lives in their thoughts their emotions in every possible way and i thank you that you will bring the release that you'll send the comforter to give comfort you'll send the uh, protector to protect father in every possible way i I ask you to help and to heal and to release people to walk in absolute freedom. Father, you took us out of Egypt. You took us out of the world. You took us out of our past so that we could be free. We could walk in true freedom. And so, Father, I thank you that you will help us to reach that freedom, that we'll enter into our land of promise, that we'll enter into the place of holiness, to the place of fullness, to reach our full potential, and so, Father, I ask that you will touch each one in a special, unique way, that they will know that you are with them in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was wonderful. <laughs> I, you guys have a great trip. And then um, you and I will conspire behind the scenes and we'll figure out when you'll come back and we'll yeah, do part sure. three. Thank yeah, you so much, sure. Amanda. God okay. bless everybody. And you can find Amanda at CanaanMinistries.org. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Bye.